The NBA has been around for over 75 years, and in that time, we've seen tons of duos win tons of championships. Some have early fallouts, and others go on to create dynasties. Today, we're going to be ranking the top 10 duos of all time. We'll be spending a little bit more time discussing them as we end up cracking into that top seven. The first three, we're going to kind of speed through a little bit. But before we get into this video, I have to say thank you guys so much for the support recently on the channel. Tomorrow, Mark marks the start of me uploading every single day for the month of December. So if you're new here and enjoy NBA and basketball related content, please be sure to consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any daily uploads. Without further ado, let's get straight into this thing with number 10, Jerry West and Wilt Chamberlain. Now, Jerry West and Wilt Chamberlain played in an era way before my time and way before your guys' time. Unfortunately, all we really have to, you know, kind of commemorate their dominance is a very little amount of film and statistics and some of the statistics aren't even the advanced ones that we're gifted with today their record together in the regular season was 214 wins and 74 losses while in the postseason they went 43 and 25. Jerry West averaged 25 points, four rebounds, and eight assists, while Wilt averaged almost 20 and 20. This duo was definitely riddling the NBA with dominance. However, a lot of people kind of give it flack because it was, you know, before their time, and they didn't really win as much as you would want an elite one-two punch to. Jerry West obviously has that one and seven NBA finals record. You could say it's Bill Russell's fault. I digress, they'd come in at number 10. At number nine, we kind of have a controversial one. I'm putting John Stockton and Carl Malone here. Together, they have an amazing 18-year career, and while Malone is not the best man off the court, on the court, he did dominate. Together, they have a 906 and a 506 record, meaning they have a 64% win percentage in the regular season. And then in the postseason, they are 85 and 87. Stockton boasted stats of 13 and a half points, 11 assists, two steals, while Malone averaged 25 points and 10 rebounds. Up until LeBron broke the scoring record last season, Malone was number two all time on the scoring sheet. Now he's number three. And then you had John Stockton at number one for assists and and steals. This was one of the most legendary one-two punches, but they always just fell a little bit short of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. Regardless, they're definitely an elite duo. Next, we have a duo that I'm kind of interested to see what you guys think about my placement. At number eight, we have Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars. They won two NBA championships together and boasted a record of 380 and 249 in the regular season. And in the postseason, they had an outstanding 65% win rate. Isaiah Thomas Thomas averaged near 19 points and nine assists, while Joe Dumars was 16.5 points, along with four and a half assists a night. This was a very interesting duo at the time because it was rivaling the Chicago Bulls, and they're the only people to really kind of handle them when you think of teams in the Eastern Conference other than the beginning of the Boston Celtics with Bird. However, Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars showed that heart over height is a real thing and is not just a cliche. These guys balled out every single night and really just left all of their emotion out there. They're very talented on defense. They're very talented on offense. This was a phenomenal duo, but I just can't rank them any higher because of who's ahead of them. At number seven, here's where the controversy starts. I have LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. Together in the postseason, they had a 67% win record, and in the regular season, they had a near 70% win record. Both of their stats speak for themselves as they were very, very impressive. However, outside of this duo, they also had a third you could say superstar or all-star, even though his role was cut smaller, and Chris Bosh. This duo performed very well together as they won two NBA championships. One of them, you could argue Ray Allen kind of, you know, sealed the deal and helped them come back. But, you know, a lot of people like to talk about how LeBron scored the 15 or 16 points leading up to that shot. I digress. The main reason this, uh, you know, duo isn't higher is just because of the fact that they kind of came out and made a big deal and said they were going to win seven or eight or five or six or even four or three NBA championships together. And they only put together two NBA championship seasons. And then LeBron kind of jumped ship. I feel like with this team in specific, the reason they are pretty high on this list is because of the fact that without the one, two or one, two, three punch that Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, and Chris Bosh were, this team was absolutely nothing. I mean, they had some decent role players and you know, the Mike Millers, the Ray Allens in that second run, they had Mario Chalmers, 
but this team it just really did lack that you know bench punch that modern day teams so severely need next at number six we have tim duncan and tony parker now tim duncan and tony parker could be a lot higher on your list i don't mind they won four championships together they're boasting incredible records in both the playoffs and the regular season and their stats kind of speak for themselves i feel like tim duncan as far as the all-time rating goes is very very disrespectful if you don't have tim duncan at least in your top eight i mean i could maybe see you putting him in your top 10 but realistically you should be in your top eight or seven or even six Six players of all time tim duncan's easily the greatest power forward of all time and tony parker for those of you who never really watched the spurs back in the day was an absolute wizard with the ball not only from just a you know you know savvy european scoring standpoint but just a facilitation king his numbers and assist numbers never really spoke for it as the highest he ever averaged was around seven or eight assists a night however tony p was just absolutely lethal and with guys like manu ginobili coming off the bench as well sometimes even starting this spurs team definitely created a dynasty that will never be forgotten Next to number five, we have Larry Bird and Kevin McHale. Now, Larry Bird was absolutely electric, guys. Their record together in the postseason and the regular season was amazing. Almost a 75% win rate in the regular season. They both also had really very great stats. I feel like people underestimate Larry Bird's rebounding ability paired with his facilitating ability. Kind of reminiscent of how Kevin Durant plays these days. Obviously, they get compared a good amount. But Kevin Durant and Giannis Antetokounmpo, guys like that, are just kind of you know growing into great passers and larry was very hip to that before it was something that forwards did before you know being a passing forward was something you guys got to remember while larry spent a good majority of his career at small forward he was more than more than likely being opted to play the power forward during a lot of these games a lot of important games this team or this duo i should say won three championships together and they had a ton of electric pick and roll plays back in the day Obviously, I didn't really see a too, too much of it live, but I have went back and watched a lot of their pick and roll film and the way they play off each other, their chemistry is truly unmatched. At number four, we have Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. This one may be a little bit shocking, but the reason I have them so high is because of what they did to the NBA. They're both drafted at the same franchise, shout out Bob Myers and the Golden State Warriors, and they have almost a 70% win rate in the playoffs together, guys. And this wasn't against scrubs. In the Western Conference, you had to win 50 to 55 games to even make the playoffs. They beat the people in the Western Conference, and then they went and battled in all three of those championships against LeBron James and the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. Those were some of the greatest, honestly greatest finals of all times looking back at it. It was so funny, we all you know moaned and nagged and kind of complained, oh, we already know the you know Cavs and the uh, Golden State Warriors are gonna make the finals, it sucks so much. But in reality, guys, it was some of the most fun times of all times. And throughout this, they both just shot lights out from three and averaged many three points a game. Klay Thompson and the Warriors are kind of just slipping this season and they may have one more run left in them, you know, if they can figure their stuff out halfway through this season. But now that this is coming to an end in an era, it's kind of fun to look back on it with the graduation goggles and realize how great they actually were. At number three, we have Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Now, this was one of the most electric duos of all time. Kareem got his buckets whenever he wanted as he averaged his 20 points when he worked with Magic. However, Magic Johnson is one of the most electric NBA players of all time, and it can't be understated. Ahead of his time is a big, fat understatement. This guy was absolutely amazing at facilitating the ball and running the floor and rebounding and stepping up to the occasion and having the clutch gene. They have a 70% win rate in the playoffs, a 74% win rate in the regular season. They won five NBA championships together, guys, and they are definitely a top three one-two punch. You could honestly put them at one or two, and you could also put two at one or two or three, and you could also put one at one or two or three. This top three, guys, it's very, you know, what you make it, it's what you prefer. At number two, and before we get to number two, I just have to make this clear. I didn't put Bill Russell and Bob Cousy on this list, not because I don't think they deserve to be but just because my lack of knowledge on the topic at hand I really have not seen any Bill Russell or Bob Cousy clips outside of a couple that you may see on Twitter and whatnot it's funny that I've seen more Will and Jerry obviously I feel like Bill Russell and Bob Cousy could be top five 
but I just had to point that out because I know I'm going to get comments about it. My apologies. At number two, I wanted to put the number one really bad, but even as I was just thinking about it, I just can't do it. Kobe Bryant and Shaq are number two. I really do think when it comes to one two punches, they're number one, but I can't be that biased. It has to be the one two punch factor and the resume factor. Kobe and Bryant boasted remarkable stats in their time together. They had one of the most iconic three peats of all time. And had they not broken up prematurely, they definitely could have won more than three NBA championships. But unfortunately, that's just the case. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles. At number one, I'm sure you guys aren't shocked. We have Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Six championships in a row, zero or not in a row, but two different three peats, six championships, zero losses. 75% win rate in the regular season, 70% in the playoffs. Just remarkable stats, remarkable everything, honestly, guys. While Michael did most of the heavy lifting in this you know, scenario, in this tandem, in this duo, whatever you want to call it, you can't discuss or you can't dismiss the fact that Scottie Pippen is arguably the greatest second fiddle of all time. But what do you guys think? What do you make of this video? I know it's kind of all over the place at the end. I uh, appreciate it if you made it this far. As always, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay happy, health, and blessed. Peace.